Welcome to the Copy Quick Start demo for implementing Access List for Bucket Filtering. The objective of this demonstration is to present the bucket filtering capability of Okapi routing platform. In this presentation, the command line interface of our Okapi router will be used for setting up router interfaces by providing IP addresses and bringing them up. Configure dynamic routing by using RIP, demonstrating free network access without traffic filtering, setting up access lists by using the access list command and associating each list with its respective interface through the IP access group command. Finally, the access list will be validated for the filtering capability through the ping and telnet commands. The present slide depicts the network scenario across which packet filtering capability of our Okapi router will be demonstrated. The device under test is the router with the red stripes or router A. Router A has three interfaces. The serial one is connected to router B through the 10.5.5.0 network with 24 bits for its subnet mask. Again, the two fast Ethernet interfaces of the same router are connected as follows. The first one is connected to LAN 1 on the 192.168.0.0 network. The second one is connected to LAN 2 on the 172.168.0.0 .0.0 network. Within the individual LAN segments, LAN 1 comprises of machine 1 and 2 with IP addresses 192.168.1.2 and 192.168.1.5. Similarly, LAN 2 contains machine 3 and 4 with IP addresses 172.16.1.2 and 172.16.1.5. Finally, the Ethernet interface of router B is on the 192.16.0.0. In this video, two access lists for filtering inbound traffic will be implemented on router A, as shown in the figure with a brown colored bounding box. Packets are filtered for the destination host or the interface of router B which has been encircled with a green ring. The final goal is to apply packet filtering such that from LAN 1 only TCP packets are permitted to reach the destination and in the same segment the second network machine is completely blocked whereas from LAN 2 only ICMP traffic is allowed with machine 4 completely restricted to send any tra traffic across to the destination. Finally, TCP traffic is generated through Telnet and ICMP through the ping command. Proceeding on to the video demonstration. Logging into router A. Setting up interfaces of router. To interface fast Ethernet 0, we provide the IP. 192.168.1.1 slash 16 Similarly, to the second Ethernet interface, we provide the IP address 172.16.1.1 slash 16 and finally the interface asynchronous 0 is set up with the PPP encapsulation to establish a serial link with the neighbor router the interface is also given the IP 10.5 dot five dot five slash twenty four
Next, we verify the interface configuration by using the show IP routes command. From the command output, one can discern that the Ethernet interfaces are directly connected to LAN 1 and 2. Also, the point-to-point -point link has been established. Pinging the serial interface to verify the connectivity with the pair We now configure dynamic routing through RIP for the three router interfaces that is interface fast Ethernet 0, interface fast Ethernet 1 and the asynchronous 0. At this juncture, we immediately check the IP routes to gauge RIP's activity. After RIP has been enabled, a new route has been learned, that is, the route to network 192.16.0.0. The same has been prefixed with the letter R. Moving on to network machines on the two LAN segments, in each of the machines, IP and a default route with Router AS Gateway has been set. Initially, no access control has been implemented. This implies traffic flows freely. In other words, any kind of traffic can pass through Router A. The same will be demonstrated through the Telnet and Ping commands. Similarly, the same sequence of steps will be used for machine 3 and 4 of the second LAN segment. Coming back to Router A to set up our access list, we make the first access list to deny TCP traffic from a single host with IP 192.168.1.5 on LAN 1 to the Telnet port of our destination host that is 192.16.1.1 The next rule in the same access list permits all other machines on the same network to send and receive TCP packets across to the destination.
Similarly, in the second access list, we deny a single network machine on LAN 2, that is machine 4 with the IP 172.16.1.5 to send or receive ICMP packets to the same host. The next rule in the same access list permits all other machines on LAN 2 to exchange ICMP traffic. To check the currently configured access list, we use the show running configuration command. Entering the global configuration mode for applying access list. To interface fast ethernet 0, we now apply access list 110 by using the IP access group command for filtering the inbound traffic. Similarly, to fast ethernet 1, we apply access list 1 to 0 for incoming packets. In the last section of this demo, the access list will now be validated using ping and telnet commands. Starting from machine 1 on LAN 1. Pinging from machine 1 should now be blocked as ICMP traffic is not permitted. However, telnet will continue to work as only TCP traffic is allowed. Moving on to machine 3 on the second LAN segment. One can discern that the IP and default route has been set. Ping command works as ICMP is allowed to reach our destination host. Whereas TCP has been blocked so Telnet to the host doesn't work. Proceeding on to machine 2 on LAN 1, again one can see that the IP and default route has been set. As explained earlier, only TCP traffic is permitted from this LAN. However, for this machine specifically, even TCP is blocked, as is conspicuous from the video. In other words, no ping, no telnet. To conclude the video, the same scenario will now be observed for machine 4 on LAN 2. This is because for LAN 2 only ICMP is permitted, whereas in the case of machine 4 specifically, ICMP is also restricted.